Pandemonium Reigns. Yo, friends, welcome to P -P -P Pandemonium Reigns. I'm getting so good at saying Pandemonium, Mike. I'm getting better. That's what we're talking about. Progress, I'm baby. Progress. <laughs> I'm Dan. He's Mike. What up, what up? How are you guys doing out there in the digital world? Thank you for listening to Pandemonium Reigns. Coming to you from YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and hopefully soon on Pandora if they will ever approve us, bro. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So we got one good thing on the show today. And coming at you in the middle of the week, usually drop episodes on Fridays, but we'll be dropping one. A special one for you today. Not mainly talking Tennessee today, Mike. Are you sad? Not sad. We're going national, baby. <laughs> We're looking at uh, things in a national spotlight. <laughs> We've got the 247 dropped 10 best offenses per Brad Crawford. Okay. Who's this guy? I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. And uh, just just bef before we get things started, how are on a scale of one to ten, Mike, how ridiculous is this list? This list checks a lot of the boxes that I would expect to see out here as far as teams that I would expect on this list, but still going to go five, seven out of ten. Ridiculous. I don't think it's There's good. just issues here and there. I agree. I'm fine with that. There's, There's issues. I have issues at several spots. There's, there's a lot of issues, a lot of issues. So let's talk about it. I'm going to, I tell you what, let's, let's, if you're listening out there, maybe you haven't seen this list. Let's just bring it to you by surprise. Let's, let's work this. backwards down to the one spot. Brad Crawford, top 10 best returning offense at number 10, the Pony Express. SMU. What do you think? Do they do they deserve to be on this list? Do they not? I mean, should we even be considering group five schools? Talk to me. That's that's a good point. Um, you know, the chance for a group of five school to be on this list is is so much higher because I mean, you think about the UCFs before Hopple and Scott Frost left. You think about your SMUs, your Houston's, your Cincinnati's. I mean, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You mm -hmm. think about those teams that aren't playing just absolute titanic defenses uh every week and they're if they have a solid quarterback and some skill guys they're going to have a great chance to be on a list like this if you yeah. take everyone into account yes um then again if you remove them from this list if you have separate list you have a power five you have a group of five think about what a snoozer that power, that group of five list would be man oh my gosh right. i couldn't dedicate the time to read it right um, I don't Personally. even know how we're going to get through but, the yeah. conversation talking about group of five schools. Like, I don't know anybody. I mean, Desmond Ritter's gone. That's all I know, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. we, I mean, we cheated and we looked at articles. But yeah. anyway, with that said, so I, I went and Googled uh, on ESPN top total offensives for 2021 last year. Do you – It's a here's a hint. It's a group five school. Do you want – so, number one uh, number one was Ohio State. Take a guess at who you think the second school was. Oh, my goodness. I have a guess that I'm feeling really good about. Okay. I hope I don't disappoint you or myself with this. It's but they had, a quarter, they had a quarterback that did a lot. Mm. Oh. Oh. It's not like Western Kentucky, is it? What? Like, <laughs> Bro, air high five. What up, so bro? I'm, Air, I'm just saying, I, Bailey Zappi broke like every record that NCAA football has ever seen. So this is why I love you. My love for you is conditional, <laughs> but this is why I love you. So Ohio State led the country in. Uh, they had six thousand six hundred thirteen uh, yards, averaging five hundred and fifty-one per game. Western Kentucky, you ready for this? 528 per game. 528. And now, they were all pass yards. I don't know if you know that. They were all pass yards. <laughs> Every single one of them. Every <laughs> single one of them. Now, I listen this because that was fun. You want to take a stab at number three last year? Not Any group hints? five. Not not group five. You want the conference? I'm gonna guess SEC is my guess, but you tell me the conference. Atlantic Coast. Atlantic Coast, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was high, 504 yards a game, 6,500 total, not Pittsburgh. Okay. Who was it? Who's three? Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> Who, what, and where? What, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Didn't yeah. realize they were still playing football. So, anyways, um, talk to me about SMU. Is this does it deserve that ten spot? You know, I think we both glanced slash read the article, um, and the things that stood out to me is that they bring back Tanner Mordecai and their leading rusher Trey mm-hmm. Siggers. I think is how you pronounce that. Sure. They lose their head coach Sonny Docks to TCU. TCU is replacing a legend. Um, they they lose another good running back, Ulysses Bentley, to Ole Miss, which is intriguing to me because uh, Ole Miss also brought in um, – wow, just went blank. They brought in Zach – gosh, I can't even think yep. of his name. Same. Yeah, exactly. They brought in the <laughs> TCU running back that was really good. Yeah. Um, but they bring in Rhett Lashley to replace Sonny Docks. So they're going to have a great chance. Uh, based on their competition that they play – Mm-hmm. They're going to have a great chance to land in the top 10 on a list like this. I mean, yeah. they're going to air it out. I'm positive. Yep. But if they yep. do run the ball, they're yep. going to bring back their leading rusher. They could certainly land in the top 10 based on who they play. Yeah. I mean, Tanner Mordecai threw for 3,600 yards, 39 scores. Uh, other other group five schools we could have mentioned, uh, they could have mentioned Coastal Carolina, Fresno yeah. State, um, uh, SMU. Sure. Why not? Bring back Why the Pony not? Express. With that Please. said, you and I talked earlier in the week about they've got a nice little NIL deal that they're bringing to Dallas. 35 k per year per player. I think I got some eligibility left. I believe Puff Daddy wrote a song about this. More money, more problems. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> At the ninth spot, Brad Crawford. Listen, I hope this guy never finds us since we've run his name in the ground. Brad Crawford. <laughs> luckily, we're still small. <laughs> drops the Longhorns at number nine. I have a – I don't uh, – you know what? I don't know how I feel about this. What about you? What do you – Texas. Can you tell me where they – did they finish high last year? I can. I can look because I'm I know ready. You were looking a I've got ago. this pulled up. Let's see. So, it's it's organized by yards per game, and I am scrolling. I'm scrolling. So, you're still scrolling, and that <laughs> that gives me – concern for texas landing on the, this list so it, you know it, they don't have like the numbers next to the teams or anything like that but texas averaged 424 yards per game averaging 5097 total so here's the thing do they have the dudes to reach the 530s or you know what you were mentioning a minute ago for Ohio state and for western kentucky you know can they get into the 500s and based on those receivers that they've got um you know, bringing in a guy like uh, Jaleel Billingsley at tight end, mm-hmm. returning B. John Robinson. I mean, they have the dudes for sure. Yeah. But my issue is my concern. The article mentioned if their offensive line performs. That's that's a big thing. That's a big um, if, bro. That's a huge if. And I, I don't have a ton of faith in Quinn Ewers. I'm sorry. You know. How can of you? Of course. I, exactly. That's That's exactly where I'm coming from. Hudson Card is another option there. They're going to have options. So can they land on this list? Absolutely, they could. Um, the competition in the Big 12, I mean, points are going to be scored. Yards are going to be there to be yep. had. They could certainly land on this list. I don't like that the article's concerned is their offensive line. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to keep a quarterback upright and protected in order to get the ball to those receivers, which they're pretty pretty loaded at. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, they could land in the top 10. I mean, if they don't, then I don't like the future for Sarkeesian at Texas where it's been hard to find a guy. Yeah. Um, they absolutely could land on this list, but it does concern me that it's talking about if the offensive line performs. Yeah. Um, not that Tennessee's in, been in a m- much better place to talk crap against anyone, but you got to have offensive linemen at a place like Texas, man. There's just so many kids in that state. You got to land them. And heck, I'm, I'm rooting for them too. I, oh, if, sure. While they're in that Big 12, please. Yeah. Win it. Absolutely. Please win it. Absolutely. When they come to the SEC, if it's not Tennessee, please win the SEC. Oh, for sure. Be my guest. I'm here Be for my that. Guess. I'm here for that. Absolutely. I will yeah. go ahead and, and and make a a hot take or a bold prediction here and say that they will not finish as a top ten offense because the dudes that they have coming in haven't really spent any time together. Yeah. If, if it is Quinn Ewers. I mean, this will be his first start uh, in Texas, transferring from Ohio State, basically going there to get some cash money. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to say his name. Isaiah Nior, Nior, coming in from Wyoming. Yeah, uh, but Billingsley is also a portal guy. Now you said, do they have the dudes? I don't know if they have dudes, but they have a dude and Bijan. Yeah, I mean, a guy that you really, really like. Uh, Robinson is, is coming in. 
and we found out uh, last week of uh, uh, what's his name, Ajayi Hall, getting arrested. So yeah, the, the dudes that you've got that you're talking about haven't played together. Yeah, I don't know. So they're I, really gonna have to pull it together to to land in the top twenty five because something tells me the amount of time that you spent scrolling that they weren't in the top 25 a year ago. So yeah, a lot to do there. Um, yep. Good. It's a, it's a good thing. Coaches do take jumps in their second year. It stops. Sure. Um, so there's definitive opportunity there, but yep. they will have to, to piece it all together in jail. Yep. Texas is one of those schools. You're going to have to show it to me before yeah. I'm going to have to buy in. It's, it's kind of like us against Florida. I, I'm going to have a hard time picking us against Florida n- until we do it. You know, what Until I'm we do it, yeah. So. And really, it's probably going to take a couple of wins for me to do it regularly. So I agree yeah. with that. They, uh, before we move on, Texas absolutely wet the bed for the rest of the season after that terrible loss to Oklahoma. They did. They, and they it breaks my bed. heart. Just yeah, so it's out sure. there, it breaks my heart. But they did. Yeah, I mean, uh, the second UT – we're rooting for you. Absolutely. Which takes us to the eight spot. <sighs> Sorry, that was involuntary because I know he's coming here. <laughs> the Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Ugh. I've been working on my pronunciation. Bulldogs. <laughs> You're nailing it. <laughs> I'm not the Bulldogs. <laughs> so for our listeners out there, I'm about an hour away from Athens, Georgia. I, I'm in Bulldog country, and it's like I want to throw up. <laughs> yeah you know, every day so i'm in gainesville georgia i don't know if i've ever told you this but you can rent this giant bulldog that is like a sign and you can put whatever you want on the sign and you can place it wherever you want in the city i think it's stupid it's stupid it's it sounds pand- like something georgia would do you know what i mean pandemonium anyway <laughs> <laughs> um so in another news to georgia getting getting the conversation started with them stetson bennett got a haircut looking like a Never mind, I can't say that word. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> talk to me about Georgia. They, they're losing a lot, man. They're losing a lot. Um, the pressure will definitely be felt more by their offense. Uh, they didn't have to do much last year. Breaking news, that defense was otherworldly. Um, and they still managed to be ninth in the country last year, I read, mm. um, which was higher than, uh, than I figured. Yeah. Um, the article talks about Stetson's – 9.97 yards per attempt last year, which was third nationally. Mm-hmm. I think it was second all time for Georgia behind Aaron Murray, a record that Aaron Murray holds. Mm-hmm. Not surprised because he was very, very good there. Yeah. Um, but here's my issue for Georgia to land on this list in the top 10 in scoring. Last year, they were able to throw it to George Pickens. Last year, they were able to throw it to Jermaine Burton. Um, they'll still be able to throw it to Brock Bowers. They, they're going to be able to do that. Sure. You know, there's Eric Gilbert there. If he wants to get it all put together, Mm -hmm. um, there's two tight ends, and Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's more behind them. But what receivers are going to make secondaries respect their passing game? For sure. For all intents and purposes, they can probably line up and run the ball and win 10 games without even breaking a sweat. Absolutely. But to land on a top 10 list like this, as far as yards and points that you score, I think you're going to need to pass the ball around the yard a little bit. Um, so Stetson's going to need to continue that, that good play that he had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's going to take some receivers breaking out, not at all saying that they don't have highly recruited prospects waiting in the wings, but mm-hmm. the ones that we know, um, are not really there anymore. Um, yeah. there's a, there's, they didn't lose everyone, you know, Kyrus Jackson's there for his 47th year of eligibility. Um, Adonai Mitchell. Thank you, Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, he <laughs> plays in Athens, Georgia, good players. <laughs> Good players that are there, mm-hmm. but they lose two big ones in Pickens and Jermaine Burton. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like that analysis a lot. I think where Georgia lands for me, I, I will I will put them at the end of the year uh, as a top ten offense, and it's it's simply based on their ability to run. Yeah, They're, they are so deep in offensive line and in their running back stable that I think yep. it's, it's just going to open up the pass that well. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that they will have some kind of receiver explode or emerge. Yeah. What bothers me most about this article, when is this, when is this agenda going to die? It says this, my guy, quarterback Stetson Bennett, entering his final campaign with a noticeable chip on his shoulder. Bro, <laughs> This narrative is tired. 
It's dead. It's so dead, man. I mean, whether he, how responsible he was or not, he's a national championship winning quarterback. He didn't play half bad in that championship game. He's had his bad moments against Alabama and in other games, but he didn't play half bad in that championship game. Yeah. No, they did have to make some plays to win, um, or it would have been a lot closer had their defense not scored the points that they did. Right. But this chip, this chip on the shoulder thing is so tired. I don't care what he was coming out of high school. I don't care that he wore the mail carrier hat in his freaking camps and things like that. I do not care. Yep. I don't care. If you want to put the chip on his shoulder, maybe it's because we're still kind of downplaying, mm-hmm. downplaying him and he won a championship. But it's so tired. I don't care anymore. Go Listen, and do it again. He was good enough to get it done. He got it done. Stop he got it. it done. He's got a ring. Stop it. Exactly. So anyway, uh, we're not biased at all. No. Our, for no our big Georgia guy. Big Georgia guy here. <laughs> Anyway, I hope your wife's not listening to the show because she may or may not be a, uh, claim to be a Georgia fan. Number <laughs> seven, moving on, Oklahoma Sooners. I don't know, bro. I think I have a problem with this. What about you? Dude, this is this is just probably because they've lived on this list for, I don't know, yeah. 25 years. Yeah. Close to that. Um, I do like that they got Jeff Levy. I think that their collection of coordinators is dang good. I mean, Venables has done it for a long time at a really high level. He's got OU roots. Mm -hmm. Jeff Levy is, I I think, underrated and future head coach material. Sure. Uh, They do bring in Dylan Gabriel to kind of pick up where the transfers of Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler leave them, which, you know, if it was maybe anything higher level defensively than the Big 12, I might be concerned, but Mm -hmm. I'm sure he can get it done there. I was really thinking about Texas when I thought about where Oklahoma landed. Um, You know, I know maybe we haven't been in this position in a few years, but I feel like I know a lot of the Texas names a little bit better than I know the OU names because Mm -hmm. of the, well, frankly, they just haven't had a lot of turnover there in some time. Um, But, you know, I I don't, I could certainly see them not landing on this list, but it's kind of like a tradition out there. They put up points and yards and they've kind of taken the necessary steps to, ensure stability through a coaching change like yeah lincoln leaving for the sunny beaches of california um mm. dylan gabriel and and levy they could certainly do it but yeah. wouldn't be yep. shocked if they don't finish in the top 10 yeah no i think you i think you said enough about oklahoma i wouldn't be shocked if they end up top 10 one reason i like that is because levy and gabriel reunite they spent time yeah. together at UCF in 2019 don't be surprised if Oklahoma is in your top 10 on offense number six Houston two guys should I say the Houston Zach Wilson's <laughs> yes you should you're QB baby <laughs> I uh I listen I, I have zero zero desire to to spend time talking about Houston right here yeah because I just don't know that people care <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't care. Hey, Pink's Pink's Clayton Pokey, owe me a back. Coke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. What are we going to do? Right? Yeah. What are we going to do? Moving what we, on. <laughs> what do we know about Clayton Toon? Okay. So there's your number six. Um, here's the here's where it starts to get really meaty in this top yes. five. Number five. Juicy. Trojans. Trojan. Oh, gosh. I just referenced the <laughs> co- co- uh, condom commercial. Um <laughs> <laughs> Youth oh, my master word. by day, y'all. So, um, <laughs> Southern California Trojans, are they going to be a top 10 offense at the end of the year? Man, if they're not, if they're not a top 10, if they're not a top five offense, then they need to fire everybody. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they had, they performed like college football free agency at its best. They got receivers, sure they've got receivers stacked up, and then they bring in Jordan Addison. Um, it's never that hard to find a quarterback at Southern Cal despite their drop-offs, and they bring in Caleb Williams with their head coach. There was definitely not tampering. Don't even think about it. Um, <laughs> if, if they don't land on the top five offenses for 2022, it ain't going to work there, dude. Like, you can't convince me otherwise. Like, they yeah. should be there. They should run away with that conference because mm-hmm. of the, the firepower that they have. Can they stop anybody? Don't know. Don't yeah. care. If they can't stop anybody, that means they'll score more points because they're going to be competing to win the game Absolutely. that way. So Absolutely. if they don't land top five, forget about it, dude. It's not going to happen for Lincoln. They have to land top five. Like yeah. they have to. Not to mention, I, I 
and I could be wrong here, but that conference right now, I think is just a joke. There's I think the, it's in shambles, man. There's, there's, there's not, there's, there's one team that I look at in that conference. And as a Tennessee fan, I go, I don't, I don't want to play them. And it's not Southern California. It's yeah. Utah. I look at Utah and I go, I do not want to play those guys. Yeah. But I think you said it best. If, if Southern California is not a top 10 team in, in excuse me, offense by the end of this year, what a freaking disappointment. I go back to what we said previous about LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch's first year. I think, I think there's going to be a little bit of a chemistry issue there. Yeah. But I don't, I won't be surprised if, if they, if they turn it on because the competition out there is garbage. Yeah. Garbage. So anyway, number four, I find four. low. I find really <laughs> low. I wrote that down as well. The, the Al- Amabala. I'm a bala. We just love Alabama. We just love them. I'm a bala. Crimson Tide. How many teeth? (laughs) Excuse me. How many? How many? How many? (laughs) Got me. (laughs) Oh gosh. What are they going to be a top ten total offense at the end of the year? Well, well, wait. Before you say anything, I'm going to count to three. It's going to be yes or no. You say uh, you say yes or no. Uh, We'll we'll go at the same time. Top ten offense. Wait 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 wait. Let's do this. Top three offense. All right. Let's do it. Ready? All right. Here we go. One, two. Three. Yes. Yes. Hundred yes. percent. Yes. Yes. Dude. Yes. I've I've praised Bryce Young more than I wanted to already in the in the few episodes we've done of this podcast. I think he's remarkable. Their offensive line is going to bounce back. You just you can just feel it. Like yeah, it, it's just like death taxes and Alabama offensive line is going to be fine. Yeah. Um, receiver position is going to be fine because a guy like Bryce Young is going to ensure that they're fine. They've recruited lots out at the position Mm -hmm. for 10 years. Now they've been a factory at the position. I mean, Mm -hmm. they're going to be fine. Yep. They bring in Jameer Gibbs. What a freaking cherry on top. That is Mm. man. We had that mm, multiple times. I thought we had him. I mean, it's too low. It's too low. I won't go as far as to say that it, you know, fire them. If it does, if they don't land top three or higher, but they certainly have the potential to because Bryce Young, man, I just he's such a stud. Yeah. They bring in Jermaine Burton that we talked about from Georgia. I'm a little bit hypocritical, hypocritical here, excuse me, sure. uh, where I talked about Georgia not having the receivers that we know of and losing guys. Mm-hmm. Alabama's losing them, and I don't care because Bryce Young in that offensive line is just levels for me above Stetson Bennett. Right. Um, they're going to be fine if they don't finish top three or higher. Really, I'm thinking one, two. Um, I'm, I'm confused at that point if yeah, they don't. I don't get it. If you're looking at this you're, and you're a listener, you might be saying, now, wait a second. You dogged Texas because you've got all these newcomers coming in and, and their ability to play together. Okay, y- you would be correct uh, in, in Jamar Gibbs coming into Tuscaloosa, Jermaine Burton coming into Tuscaloosa, Tyler Harrell coming into Tuscaloosa. A lot of transfers here. So you have that. I get that. But I think the major difference here between a school like Texas and Alabama is Quinn Ewers and Young. There's there's just not a comparison. Uh, Not even. Young is proven. And not to mention, we've had this offseason for Alabama's offensive line to get healthy. That was That was their issue towards the end of the year. I think if those guys stay healthy, that national championship game is different. You know, I just like we've talked really about do. the receivers not getting hurt in that championship game, if the offensive line's healthy, that's just another factor that could have tilted that game their way. Yep. Matter of fact, before we move on, I've I've got Bama as as the second best offense in the country. It will be a head to head between them and the team that we'll discuss in a minute. Yep. For that yep. matter. Which leads us to <laughs> I just don't get this, especially after what's happening. Oh, yeah. The Wake Forest Baptists. <laughs> I think they're Baptist anyway, the Demon Deacons. Um, what in the world? So is it because of the competition? Was this put together before the news broke on Sam Hartman? Um, I can actually answer that because that was my thought. In fact, I wrote it down before I read the article. I said this was obviously pre-Hartman news, but no. Um, it referenced Hartman and the unfortunate situation for that young man, um, that it does hinge on his availability and his health but that the wide receivers that they have and Dave Clawson as an offensive mind, you know, the competition obviously could set up for them in this, in the ACC. Um, 
I still think if it did, if everything went to plan for Wake Forest, they're probably on the back half of this top 10 for me if if they put it all together and land here because I just, man, I don't know where they finished last year, but I just don't see them outperforming your USC that I'm expecting big things from, your Alabama that I'm obviously expecting big things from, mm-hmm. teams that performed well last year and could take a jump, can't hit Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't even talked about Ohio State yet. We'll get to them in a minute. This is just too high for me, man. Yeah, It could obviously happen because the ACC – and Hartman is really, really good um, if he's healthy. And, and heck, I'm rooting for him to be. Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't matter to me. It, it just does not matter to me. I think other teams will outperform them, even considering all those other factors that we mentioned. Yeah, my, my, my question goes to, if it's not Hartman, who is it? Now, yeah. now, now, now granted, we are talking about Wake Forest, so they're, they're not going to catch the um, media's national spotlight a lot. They're yeah. not going not gonna to catch a lot of attention. But according to this article, it says it could be a guy by the name of Michael Kern. Here's my here's my problem with that. I, I don't I'm not sure I care what your name is because Hartman is good for 4,200 yards and 39 scores. 4,200 yards, 39 scores for the that's, people in the back. <laughs> that's 4, really really yards, good. 39 really good scores, and he's not there. He's not going to be taking the snaps. So how in the world can you put Wake Forest as your top three offense? I just don't get this at all. Above a Bryce Young-led Alabama? Yeah. I mean, that this is the one that, that gives me the most, the most issues on this list. I mean, frankly, I just that, that blows my mind. It really does. I want Brad Crawford's job, and I want it now. <laughs> I want it now. Four seven, we're available. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, which leads us to a very interesting team coming into two spot, and I am fighting the urge. You know what? I'm going to do it just for the heck of it. You know what? Let's just turn this up a little bit. Okay, I regret that actually. So <laughs> the number two spots, which you and I have talked about this, our beloved Vols. Wow. My opinion, wow. real quick, too high. Too high, man. Um, you know, the article that we've referenced that we're talking about um, for this, for our balls, they talked about Hendon returning. Mm-hmm. They talked about Hopple, what he's done, who he is. Um, then there's the obvious choice that you talk about, Cedric Tillman. And then it mentioned Jalen Hot. Other shows we projected about Jalen. Mm-hmm. He's getting a lot of rave reviews this offseason. Um, he's changed his body a little bit, added some good weight and muscle. But the third player that you mentioned for this offense is someone that hasn't done it before. Not that all these teams that we've talked about in the top 10 have guys that have done it before, Yeah. but man, Tennessee, I believe was seventh in this list last year. Um, I think if you look at the points per game or the yards, Mm -hmm. um, that is actually higher than I would have thought it was. Of course, Tennessee could make this jump because they did things. We frankly, they did things we didn't expect last year. Yeah that I wouldn't have even imagined. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's too high. I, agree. I think your top three could and should look like Ohio State, Alabama, and USC. Tennessee could be top five. Certainly they could be top ten. Man, if they're second, a lot of things went well on Rocky yeah. Top in 2022. Yes. Um, I mean, that is just remarkably high. Yeah. The highest expectations. Um it blows my mind to see Tennessee. Um, as I was reading this article, I was wondering why it came in my mailbox from Go Vols 24 mm-hmm. 7 because I was reading it. And as I got into the top five, I was like, I haven't seen Tennessee yet. We must not have made the list. Then I look at number two yeah. and I'm just, I mean, my jaw probably hit my desk because yep. I was just blown away. Yep. I just, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. Yeah. Um, I, I just think there's better offenses out there. Not that I don't I like do ours, uh, like Hooker coming back, like Tillman coming back. My concern for us is though, we're no longer going to be taking be taking anybody by surprise. Yes, especially now that we're in national spotlight. Yeah, not going to take anybody by surprise. So anyway, we talk Tennessee all the time. Number one leads us to Ohio State. I agree. Yes. I I completely agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the return of 
oh gosh, uh, CJ Stroud, the return of, um, I can, he's got the most Smith odd names. and Jigba. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got everybody raving about Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I remember right, they've got Trav- uh, Travion Henderson coming back. Yep. So I like it. Man, I like it a lot. And I like They're their schedule. A, oh, yeah. You got to like their schedule. Um, you know, for the teams that we look at and when we talk about the competition that they're going to play, they are the most loaded team that will also benefit from not playing an absolute gauntlet of defenses. Yeah. Um, of course, you're going to face some solid defenses, but they abuse those defenses year in and year out in the Big Ten. Uh, it's just what they do. They they replace talent and and reload at the rate that Alabama does, just not quite with the same level of success as far as championships because they run into Alabama in the playoff and they run into, you know, Clemson's and Georgia's in the playoffs. Um, but they're absolutely loaded, man. Um, what a year, how much fun the uh, NFL will be for years to come because you'll have Bryce Young and CJ Stroud going into it, Yeah. but they're loaded. The schedule sets up nicely. Yep. Michigan lost a lot. I mean, there's just reasons after reasons to think that they're going to be number one. Yeah. And I think they nailed that one. Yeah. No, I, I I totally agree. So with that said, reorder for me the top five. What do the you top think? Top five for me, I'm okay with Ohio State. I certainly see the path for them to be number one. I'm going to stick with Ohio State at number one. But at number two, I'm going Alabama. Um, I mean, just everything we said about them, Bryce Young, transfers and speed, mm-hmm. enough said. They're number mm-hmm. two for me. Mm-hmm. This is where it gets interesting for me. Um, I feel like I'm just going chalk here with the the remarks that I've made. I'm going to go USC at number three because the competition level, um, Caleb Williams, Lincoln Riley. Yep. It's just what they do, man. It's just what they do. Their offense is loaded. Their defense is not quite as loaded. Um, Are there, you know, does it take some time to get it rolling? I I really don't think so because I just think their their schedule is going to allow for whatever they want to do. Their schedule is going to allow for them to get into shootouts and win those shootouts. It is absolutely it is, and and frankly, I don't think there will be many teams equipped to shoot out with that caliber of offense in that conference. So, yep, I'm going to go USC at three. Mm -hmm. Man, where to go at number four? Goodness, goodness, goodness. I have a big contingency here. Um, You know, if you look at the list of 10 here, four would not be a massive jump for Tennessee. Um, If we're talking about Tennessee being seven in a list after everything, after the dust settled from 2021, Mm -hmm. um, if Tennessee takes a step, you know, won't be by catching people by surprise. I could see them going four or five. Um, If Hartman plays at Wake Forest, I could certainly see them being in the top five. But he's not. You know, if he's not available, ain't happening. And, with you know, I'll give you a six team just based on that contingency. Um, for me, looking at this list, I would probably, gosh, just, I hate to do this just because we trashed them. But, you know, give me SMU or, or Houston because okay. they're going to put up numbers. Okay. Um, they both bring back their quarterbacks. They have great schemes and things that work at the AAC level. You know, give me one of those teams to round up your top five because I think they're going to put up numbers. Galore. So, give, so, so give me give me a solid four and five though. Give me a solid four. Put it put it in stone, bro. All right, here we go. Um, give me SMU and, at four. Okay, well, 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 I'm going to give you another variable here. Cannot be group five because that's okay. no fun. It's no fun. All right. Looking at this, then <clears throat> give me Tennessee at four. Okay, and five. You know, give me. Man, this is tough. Looking at this list, Mm -hmm. give me Oklahoma at five because, again, competition level, reuniting quarterback and coordinator. Give me me Oklahoma at five. Okay, so the only difference difference is in our top five, uh, our top three is the exact same. Our four and five are just reversed. I've got OU at four, and i got Tennessee at five, and it's basically um, because of the, the strength schedule. Sure, that's totally fair. This when the schedule rolls out. Let's let me ask you two more things before we bounce off here. We got just a few minutes left. Give me a team that's not on this top ten list, power five that will be by the end of the year. That will be on this list, man. That is tough as well. Um, 
I've got two that I can go ahead and throw at you. I'm going I'm to give you one that I think will be on the list. And then I got, and I got another one to throw at you that I believe is, is like a, like a hot take sleeper. Okay. 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 So the team that I think that's going to be on this list by the end of the year, call me crazy, but Michigan. Michigan. They came to mind when I was considering who to answer with because, well, frankly, the quarterback experience, um, they have running backs and receivers that I like. Yeah. And they've, they have had good offensive line play yep. despite the issues that they've had there. So, yep. yeah, give, you know, absolutely I could see Michigan. I'm going to go a slightly different direction on this. I'm going south here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to take a chance on Miami. Um, they've added a lot of transfer pieces. Whoa, they have a quarterback okay. that's, that's garnering a lot of hop as well. I do like Mario Cristobal. Um, goodness knows they'll probably have offensive line play. If they don't have it this year, you know they're going to put it together within the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bet on Miami. Um, okay. I don't love Van Dyke as much as other quarterback prospects that we've talked sure. about. But sure. He's a fine quarterback, and the, again, competition ugh, competition level that they play in the ACC, defenses that they face, I'm going to take a bet on Miami. Okay, Miami, all right. You know, there, there's another team that we could throw out there just based on what you said or triggered a thought here with, with, with Van Dyke at Q in Miami is, is O'Leary at NC State. That's a good answer. They're going to put up points. They're, they are going to put up points, and they're getting a lot of hop entering the season. Yep, yep, yep. So here's my sleeper, though. I'm going I'm I'm to come at you. From, from nowhere let's hear it florida state florida state florida state okay because i what we're entering year three or four with norvell i think things are going to finally come together for these guys culture is starting to shift for those guys you got you've got you know who your cue coming back is i'm gonna say that they're gonna be a top 10 offense and you ready for this I'm, I say that they are going to be responsible for the upset of the year. Okay. I say they beat Clemson. Hey, that would be truly exciting because they've just been in a deep, deep pit down there. Um, and, and it's now or never. It's now yeah. or never for them. So, I, yeah. I, think, I think Dabo is going to hang on to Uyagalale to his dying death. I, I could be wrong about that. I, I hope I'm wrong about that because I would love to see yeah. Clemson in the playoff. However, I think I think Florida State's going to catch them. Okay, catch I've got a hot take for you, and it's okay. not a scorching hot take, okay. um, but it's a team that I was surprised not to be on this list. If I'm if okay. I'm honest, okay, um, perhaps Miami might even be a hotter take. Um, but you ready? Yep. Texas A and M. I can't believe they didn't get mentioned for this, man. Haynes King is healthy. Jimbo's a quarterback guy. I hear They've you. Got freaking weapons. But in do they know Anaya what they Smith. have in Haynes King? Do we? Do they know? They don't, but they are excited about him, and I do think that Jimbo can certainly raise up a, a quarterback in that offense and the options that they've got. So that is I'm going to go that direction. Um, as as kind of sick as it makes me as well, but I think that there's someone that not a lot of people are talking about when it doesn't pertain to NIL and recruiting for okay. Texas A&M. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I mean. You, uh, I, you know what? I kind of hope you're wrong. I just, I'm ready. For, I'm, I'm ready for them to be done. I'm over it. I hear you. Well, hear hey, you. We're, we're in the last 60 seconds of the show. Thank you guys for tuning in, for listening. Uh, at some point, we need to talk about Jordan Rogers' top five quarterback list because it goes like this: Will Rogers, KJ Jefferson, Hendon Hooker, Spencer Rattler. Okay, and then Bryce Young. But anyway, we love you guys. We're Pandemonium Reigns. I'm Dan. He's Mike. Make sure you check us out on Spotify, on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, on all the things. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your mama. Tell your daddy. Tell your grandma in Arkansas. You got it? We love you guys. Love you guys. See you. Pandemonium reigns.